Welcome to the Classy Career Girl podcast. I'm your host, Anna Runyon, founder and CEO of Classy Career Girl, one of Forbes' most influential career sites. This is a podcast for a community of women who want to turn their passions into work they love. You'll learn how to become happy, successful, and balanced with class, skill, and style. We believe that you can create your future. So stop delaying your great life. Go put yourself out there. You can have your great life and career right now. Hey guys, it's Anna Runyon. I am back. Today we are talking about starting a business in 2020. In the first quarter of 2020, I'm going to talk about how to create that 90 day plan to get your business off the ground in 90 days. So we're going to talk about the four areas to focus on to start a business in 2020. And if you're just starting a business, this is the exact plan that I recommend that you follow when it comes to starting your business. Um, I think maybe tomorrow I'll jump on and do another live about if you already have a business, what you should focus on to grow that business. But this live today is going to be all about just getting started, like those first couple steps. So if you want to start a business in 2020, just leave a comment below. Let me know. Just say, yes, that's me. I want to start a business. Um, Feel free to post your comments below as well. Uh, But this comes like breaking down your goals into 90 day plans. If you're new around here, you should know that I love 90 day plans. And this is all based off my experience growing my own business, because I always found like annual plans were very overwhelming. It was really hard for me to see a year from now where I was going to be, what my goals should even be. You know, things can change so much in just a week, let alone a whole year. And so I found annual planning actually very difficult until I started breaking down my goals into 90 day plans and breaking it down into what needs to happen in each quarter. So for now, you know, we're gearing up to (laughs) do your plan for the next year. I would highly recommend focus more like we can set annual goals, like maybe by a year from now, you want to have a profitable business. That is a great goal. And so then let's break it down into the first quarter. Like, let's just focus on Q1 from January 1st to the end of March. What do you actually have to do to get this business off the ground and to get started? So nothing happens overnight. Um, That's something I stress uh, a lot. I like to go through this journey with people long-term. We've had some, some of my clients have been members in my membership site, Corporate Rescue Plan for like over three years. Um, One of them, Anna Harrison, she just actually won our Influencer of the Year of 2019. She started in 2017 and just this year she quit her day job and now she's running her business from Portugal, which is so cool. But that's that's what I want to stress is nothing happens overnight. But when you break things into these 90-day plans, you can quickly make progress. Like Anna Harrison, she's been using these 90-day plans ever since she started. Actually, I don't know if it's ever since she started. She might've started in 2018, uh, but she's completing her goals. Like she sent me a video of her checking off those goals because she's breaking her big goals and dreams into 90 day plans. So let's dive in. Let's, let's get started. So I'm going to talk about four different areas to focus on, to start a business in 2020. And these, all these four areas are what I would focus on in Q1. So these are the things you need to do if you're just getting started. The first thing that you need to do is you need to identify your market. So you need to talk to as many people as you can about your idea. You need to interview others in the industry. When I wanted to be a career coach, I interviewed all kinds of career experts and authors, and I just tried to learn as much as I could asking them questions. Um, Putting polls up in social media. You can put a poll up in this Facebook group, ask people questions. What are they struggling with most? Um, And then I always like to say, like, find five other competitors, find five other people that are out there doing something similar. Take a bunch of notes about their offerings. You're going to like do a little market research here, write down what they're doing well, what they could be doing better and identify like what their price strategy is, like what are their similar products and your service and services. Now it's important here that we don't get um, 
obsessed and jealous here. Uh, jealousy is not something we want here. And so that's why I'm a huge fan of like unsubscribing, deleting, like not paying too much attention to those competitors. This is the only time that I recommend that you go stalk your competitors and you do your own little research project and then you unsubscribe from them. <laughs> Never, you don't have to follow them on Instagram. I follow no other career bloggers out there because I have to focus on me. I have to focus on what I'm here to do and the content I'm here to give. And so when I follow a bunch of other people, I get like way distracted. So this is the only time, I'm just warning you, the only time where you can stalk your competition and then we unfollow them. Um, and then this is, so this is gonna help you figure out what your market wants. And it's also going to help you figure out what your competitors are already doing, who those competitors are, what products and services they offer out there. And it's gonna help you come up with your offer and your price point just to see what's going on out there. Um, so when I was doing this, I was interviewing other career coaches. I was doing informational interviews. I was asking them, what's a typical day like for you? Um, you know, what do you like about your job? What do you not like about your job? What are some books that I could read? What are some courses that I could take to help me become a career coach like you? You know, is there anything I should know about this field, about this industry? Um, just learning as much as I could about what it's like to be a career coach um, and what, what the market needs. So that's the first step. The second step is to grow your audience. And so this is really important. You want to interview ideal clients and you want to identify what their favorite social media platform is because that is where we're going to grow your audience because we can't have a business if we don't have an audience of people who are really interested in what you have to offer and what, what are those things that you really um, love helping people with? What problem are you solving? So we want to build up these people of, of people who love you and who are like interested in what you have to say. It's like you guys, you're popping on here. This is, this is my audience that I have built. And so I have done the research to figure out what is your favorite social media platform? You know, what, where do you guys show up the most? And because when you're just starting, I'm not a good example because I'm kind of everywhere right now. I'm on Pinterest. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, but I've been doing this since 2011. But if you're just getting started, one, we're gonna pick one social media platform, only one where your ideal clients are hanging out. And that's where we're gonna start to grow your audience. So you wanna research people like those same competitors and figure out what social media platform are they utilizing the most? Like where is their market? Pick one social media platform, open one account, for your new business and then start testing and start engaging with the community online. So social media is not just for posting. Social media is for networking and engaging with other people as well. And so you're going to start testing. You're going to start learning. Um, when I started on Facebook, I just dove in and, and learned as much as I could about Facebooks and fa Facebooks, Facebook pages and Facebook groups. And then there was another time in my business where I just dove headfirst into Instagram, learning more about it, engaging, seeing what other people were doing. I did the same thing with Pinterest way back in, I think it was like 2016. Like I was just super focused on one social media platform, Pinterest for months at a time. And so that's really what it takes. It's like diving headfirst in. If we're trying to be on all the platforms, we're not going to become an expert at that. We're not going to be able to build that audience. And so when it comes to growing your audience, you really want to know your purpose, your vision, your values, your mission, and you're going to start posting daily and you're going to spend at least 15 minutes engaging with your community on social media. You're going to also start an email list over the next 90 days. Now, don't worry. This is not just tomorrow. Hope This is all happening in Q1, starting that email list so that when you're starting to grow that audience, you're starting to take those people from the social media platform onto your email list because then you own that email list. We don't own Facebook. We don't own Instagram. We don't own Pinterest. Like anything could happen tomorrow. Um, just like the algorithm, right? Like, you know, we're seeing a lot of people who are used to having all of the people that follow them used to see all their posts. It was the same with me when I started Facebook back in 2012 or something. Every post I did on Facebook, all of my followers saw. 
today, that is not the case. So they're in charge, which is why we want to get them to onto an email list. So we're in charge and we can email them if Facebook goes down tomorrow. Um, and then just telling people every day what you do and how you can help and focus on just helping one person every day. That's truly how you grow an audience. So that's the second thing to focus on over the next 90 days. The third thing, and this kind of wraps into the first one, which was identify your market. But the third one is to identify what your clients want. So this is a little bit different because you want to know your clients even better than they know themselves. So if you want to start a business right now, let me tell you, I know a lot about you. <laughs> so I know what, what you're feeling. I know how stressful it is to go to a day job that you don't really like and to feel like you have no time to make your business dreams happen, even though you've been thinking about it for years. I know what you think because I used to be that exact same person. And so if you're building a new business, like think about that. Think of how you know, are, did you used to be that person? And what were those challenges and frustrations, dreams and goals that you had? Um, but that's what I do is I just, I'm always surveying. I'm always talking to people. I'm always, you know, when you guys are posting in the Classy Career Girl Network Facebook group, I'm watching. I'm seeing what you're struggling with. I'm seeing how I can help. And so setting up interviews with your ideal clients, for sure doing surveys, but also just interviews, like interview your ideal clients talk to them on the phone, hear what they have to say. And then when it comes to creating your offer, you're going to create that offer based off what your clients want. So last month, you guys probably saw we released the plan course. I based the plan course exactly off a survey that I did. I did a survey and I asked you guys, what do you want to learn about planning for the new year? And you guys submitted a bunch of questions and that became my course. All I did was took a problem that you guys have and then I answered that problem and that became my offer. So it doesn't have to be complicated. That's fairly simple is figuring out the problem that your clients have and then figuring out how, what you're passionate about and how that can help you solve that problem. Yesterday, I just did a live on how to narrow down your business idea. And that's what we talked about is like how the combination of your, your passion and what you love to do and combining that with the problem that your clients have, that's what makes a successful, profitable business. So, so that was the third step. Um, getting social proof and testimonials it also falls into this area. Like in the first 90 days of 2020, um, doing practice sessions, practice clients with people, uh, and pr practice sessions, with people like say you want to be a coach doing practice sessions and getting testimonials and social proof because that's going to help you sell to the next person when you've gotten results for one person so you want to be on the lookout for creating those stories for people and the last step then in your 90-day plan for 2020 is all about attracting those ideal clients and so I would set aside time in your calendar, blocks of time where you're going to talk to those ideal clients on the phone. You're going to create a to-do list to manage your tasks and projects and your weekly activities towards your goals. So say, say that you need to talk to um, eight people every week because you know that you, you know two out of the eight people usually will buy your product. You need to start creating that system of metrics so that you can track every week. Like, how am I doing to my goal? Uh, for right now, my project manager, Lore, um, and she's also the community manager here in the Classy Curriculum Network, she challenged me to create two podcasts a week. So that's my little metric. Like, did I publish two podcast episodes this week? Because that's leading me into my bigger goals of a certain number of downloads on the podcast, you know, a certain number of members in my membership site. All of that is leading to my bigger goals, but we need to be tracking like every day, every week, how we're doing on, on track to attracting those ideal clients. So figuring out what are those things? Is it one Facebook live per week? Is it spending 15 minutes engaging in Facebook groups? Is it you know, posting on your blog once a week or doing my podcast twice a week. What is that to-do list system that's going to lead into you reaching your goals? And then, you know, start to show up consistently for your audience, start to show up and answer their biggest questions. I know it's hard. You got to get over the fear of going live and posting and 
you know, um, being, becoming who you're meant to be. I mean, it's uncomfortable and it's super scary. So it might seem like I'm making it look easy, but it's not. I've been doing this a long, long time since Facebook came out with Facebook lives. I think it was like in 2016 or 2017 or something like that. So the more you do it, the easier it gets. I will tell you, I'm looking at notes. I have all my notes written out beforehand. You can do the exact same thing. And all you do is you look at the camera and there's notes and you're just reading the notes and it's super simple. So it doesn't have to be easy or it doesn't have to be hard. It is super easy. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to give value for free, just like I'm doing here, set a launch date, let people know something is coming and you can start to kind of tease people like something is coming up. So to summarize your 90 day plan for a new entrepreneur, if you're just starting a business tomorrow, maybe I'll come back and tell you what to do if you're growing a current business in, in Q1. But if you're just starting a business, this is the exact plan that I teach my clients in the corporate rescue plan of what to do. And the first step was to identify your market, go stock those competitors and go see what was working in the market and what's not working. Number two, focus on growing that audience. Pick one social media platform and start engaging and learning as much as you can about growing that audience there. And then three, identify what that client wants. You want to know them better than they know themselves. So when you say words, they're like, yes, that's me. That's what I need. And then number four, you want to attract those ideal clients. You want to, you know, start creating that to-do list for yourself. That's going to keep you on track every single day, every single week to reaching those goals of attracting those clients, whether it's publishing content consistently, showing up, answering questions. You want to backtrack to what you need to do every day and week in order to start attracting those ideal clients. Just remember, nothing happens overnight. This is all a bunch of baby steps and it will help you reach your goals. So if you guys want more help and support on growing your audience in 2020, that's really the first step, building up that audience of people so that when it comes time to make that offer, to put that sale out there, you have an audience of people who are really excited to buy from you. We have a guide that I put together. It's our grow your audience guide, and you can download that at www.classycareergirl.com forward slash grow audience. Okay, guys. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening to the Classy Career Girl podcast. If you are serious about changing your life and your career, we'd love to welcome you into our membership community. It's where we go deeper on the principles that we teach in this podcast. So come join us in class. You can learn more at www.classycareergirl.com forward slash join.